Okay, gonna do a video on Brian Dellinger just again displaying his persecution complex. And you say, why are you doing so many videos on Brian Dellinger? Well, first of all, I did delete a lot of the videos I did do on Brian Dellinger. Second of all, uh, it's a cult, okay? And the cult can't stand it when they're criticized. Okay, I came out of this cult. And a lot of them just can't stand it when you speak against their leader. You see, they behave a lot like Catholics. And, you know, Brian does speak a lot of truth. And a lot of new Christians can get sucked into his his ministry because he does put out a lot of the truth and I do agree with a lot of what he says regarding the Bible version issue, regarding, you know, the satanic cult that is Roman Catholicism, you know, on various different issues. However, he is preaching what's left recently. I mean his earlier sermons back in his early days were really good, but just you know, as time progressed he just got worse and worse and worse and just preaching all kinds of heresy and just you know, cultism and all this other stuff. So I'm gonna show you this video. It's uh, entitled uh, "How Liars Help This Ministry," and he just just displaying his persecution complex and trying to dismiss his critics. And some of his critics, you know, I do agree are lost, but not everyone who speaks against Brian Dunning is lost. That's what Brian Dunning's cultic followers seem to think. Okay, I have one of them. His name is uh, Philip Randon. Yes, I do know any names. He came out and called me a wicked devil uh, because not because of any doctrinal issues, but just because I spoke against accountable KJV because of his blasphemous statements and a heresy taught by Brian Dillinger. So in other words, when you speak against Brian Dillinger, you're lost, basically. I, I guess, you know, they go to heaven with their holy eraser or their holy whiteout and get the book of life out and find your name and just rub it out of the book of life for committing the unpardonable sin I was speaking against Pope Brian Dillinger. You know, because that's what this Philip Randon guy, you know, his only grounds for calling me a wicked devil is not because of any doctrinal issues, his only grounds is because I spoke against Brian Dellinger, pretty much. That's what it comes down to. Because I, I pointed out a blasphemous teaching by accountable KJV calling Jesus Christ a skin suit. Instead of actually dealing with the facts, dealing with the scriptures, no, he's going to violate Proverbs 18.13 and answer the matter before he hears it, and just assume, well, because he's speaking against my preachers, he must be lost then, he must be a wicked devil. Cult. It's funny, they're just like Roman Catholics, but we don't have time to get into that. Uh, also, these new glasses I got, they're uh, blue light glasses. They really help uh, cancel a lot of the blue light, helps with the eye strain, helps with the, uh, when you get headaches, when you start work, you know, on the computer, you don't, uh, the blue light glasses help prevent that. So yeah, these, uh, I got these off Amazon. These, uh, they cancel, up. They're, they're just blue light canceling glasses, basically, but they're really good. Well, here's the video, I'm going to play it. It's called, uh, How Liars Help This Ministry, and just, Brian displaying his persecution complex. Okay, you can turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 5. I want to talk today to the liars that help this ministry. Yes, how liars help King James Video Ministries. Um, it has come to my attention so many times I get people sending me links to things and whatever else and, I, and how many lies are told about me and I just got to tell you, you know, there's times that you're supposed to thank your subscribers, thank, you know, whatever people, but I haven't really taken the opportunity yet to thank the liars, the people that lie about me and uh, just whatever. I uh, what about all the times you've lied about other people, Brian? What about the time you lied about uh, Brother Tim? You know, when he, he lovingly tried to correct you and you, out of your pride, you won't take the correction, you know? And then Tim caught Brian lying multiple times. You watched Tim's second admonition of Brian he caught Brian lying multiple times, willfully lying too. Brian knew where Tim stood. Okay, one of the lies he told against Tim was that Tim was joining the ranks of the Fenningerite cult. You know, the people, the Fenningerite people, uh, and Fenningerite, these other guys. When Tim made it clear over and over again in his other two videos, rebukes at Brian that he was not joining up with the Fenningerite cult, and he was always standing, he will always stand by the doctrines of the Bible. But yet Brian knew the truth, knew where Tim, Tim stood, and then lied about him anyway, and said, "Oh, he's joining the ranks of the Fenningerites." And that's just one of the multiple lies that Tim caught Brian in. So, he's a hypocrite, you know. He lies about other people, willfully lies, and his little cultic followers lie about other people too if they, if they disagree with Brian Dillinger. But again, it's okay when Brian does it, but then when you point out his errors, that's another funny thing about this cult too. They'll point out other people's heresies and errors all the time, but then the moment you point out their heresies, they get upset and call you lost. Okay, again, with the, whole, with the Philip Randon guy, this, this false accuser, Philip Randon, you know, you know, it's okay for them to go out and just point out everyone else's, else's heresies, but then, oh man, oh my, the moment you point out their heresies, the moment, the moment I pointed out some of their heresies and some of the blasphemous teachings of accountable KJV, 
I'm a wicked devil, then we have to just determine your loss because you're speaking against our preacher. You know? It's okay for us to do it and point out your heresies, but then when you do it back to us, oh my. That's just a very serious sin. It's a cult. Plain and simple. I got it. But and one last point I want to make, you know, uh, just like any cult, they can't stand being criticized. They can't stand it when someone speaks against their leader. You know, the cult can't stand it. Thank you. Okay? Because things are going so good. I have to attribute some of my success um, in ministry, whatever, and I don't mean monetary, I'm just saying the Lord using me, I have to attribute some of it to you out there, to my liars out there, the, the, not my liars, because you're, you're your own little thing there, I realize, but you know, I, I just got to thank some of you people for lying about me. Yeah, let me show you why. Matthew chapter 5, verse 11 through 12. Now you see what Brian does is he takes scriptures about being persecuted for speaking the truth and he applies it to him directly. So anyone who's, who disagrees with Brian or speaks against him and voices disagreements, oh, you're, you're, you're a false accuser, you're a false prophet, you know, you have to basically be wrong because Brian's not wrong on anything. You know, you have to be the, the you're, a, you're a ravenous wolf because you're speaking against Brian because Brian's never wrong, you know, apparently. That's what it comes down to. That's how they interpret these verses, okay? You will be persecuted for speaking the truth. But there's a big difference between being persecuted for speaking the truth and being called out for teaching heresy and being called out for lying about people. That's a big difference, okay? So again, he takes it to mean to him personally. So anyone who just simply voices disagreements with Brian is cast out as a ravenous wolf because you have to be wrong. You're wrong because Brian's never wrong, apparently. Ridiculous. It's a, again, it's a cult. That's what all cults do. They, they See, what cults do is that they'll take scriptures, they'll use the scriptures as a way to control people. Okay, they'll twist the scriptures to control them. Okay, continuing. It says here, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you. Hi. <laughs> and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. There are a lot of false things that are said, that are said about me. Just blatant lies. It's amazing. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecute they the prophets which were before you. Thank you. This is my way of saying thank you. You know, I, one of the things... I want to point out something too. Having videos on YouTube exposing you is not persecution. Okay? Persecution is you get locked up for... You get thrown in jail for preaching the gospel. Persecution is maybe you get jumped and attacked for, for your faith. That's persecution. Persecution is not having people making videos calling out your lies and heresy. You know, that's not persecution. That's just people calling out your heresies and lies, like I've done. But of course, you know, the, again, the cult leader can't take it when he, you know, he just can't stand criticism. He can't stand it when he's reproved or rebuked. Actually, let me pull a couple verses of scripture on that. Uh, let me just get my Bible app up. Uh, let me just make sure I have the right scripture references. Because there are plenty of scriptures that condemn Brian's uh, cult, cultic practice of not taking or not um, receiving proof. Sorry about that. Let me just make sure. Uh, where is it? So I have my I have my notes here somewhere. Let me just pull them up. I have a bunch of different files of just scriptural references. I'm just trying to make sure I have the right ones. Okay, let me, let me just search up the verses on my Bible app. Because there are plenty of scriptures that do deal with um, refusing the correction. Mm. Sorry, this isn't going as planned. Where is it? And these are some good scriptures too you should, you should uh, uh, really write down and memorize whenever you deal with a a pope-like dictator who just doesn't accept any kind of reproof or correction and likes to use their elder status to deflect any reproof or correction. Yeah, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Okay. Proverbs ten seventeen. He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuseth reproof erreth. Uh, Proverbs 12, 1. Whoso loveth instruction loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. Good description of Brian. 
Uh, Proverbs 13, 1, A wise son heareth his father's instructions, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. Here, Brian, he's just constantly scorning, just railing against people. Ridiculous. He's not hearing rebuke. He won't take correction on anything. See, that's the real reason people leave Brian's cult. People don't leave Brian's cult because they just love their sin or they want to live in sin. No, people leave Brian's cult because Brian's just prideful and arrogant, and he just won't take correction on anything, basically. He's always right. He's never wrong. And if you disagree with him, you're lost. That's the reason why people leave Brian's cult. Not because we love our sin and we want to live in sin. No, because Brian is just high-minded and arrogant, and he, he just won't take correction on anything. He won't take any reproof or correction or instruction on anything. He's always right, basically. You know, you can't, you're, you're just not allowed to disagree with him. If you do, if you voice disagreements, then you're just, you're lost, basically. Uh, Proverbs thirteen eighteen: Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth, that refuseth instruction, but he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. Proverbs 15.10, Correction is grievous to him that forsaketh the way, and he that hateth reproof shall die. Uh, Proverbs 15.12, A scorner loveth not one that reproveth him, kind of like Brian railing against Tim, because Tim lovingly tried to reprove and correct him. But through Brian's pride and high-mindedness, he just won't take the correction. Neither will he go into the wise. In Proverbs 15.32, He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth reproof giveth understanding. Good description of Brian. He does not take correction or reproof on anything. And when you try to correct him, he'll just throw his, well, I'm an elder, I'm an older man, you know, how dare you speak against me? It's the exact same thing he would condemn the IFB for doing. Now he's doing the exact same thing. You know, he's becoming the very cult he hates. He, he used to do videos condemning the IFB cult for using their, you know, the, oh, don't speak against the man of God, don't speak against the preacher. But now he's doing the exact same thing. You try to correct him, he'll throw out his preacher status at you. He's being no different. He's, again, he's doing the very thing he used to condemn people for. Which is why, you know, people have left his cult. Because they see the hypocrisy, the blatant errors. He's becoming his own pope. That's why we call him Pope Brian Dunning, or Father Brian Dunning, because he behaves a lot like a Catholic priest in how he treats those who disagree with them and try to correct them. Continuing. So I'm going to go over some of the lies here, the most common lies. And one of them is that uh, oh, there's just no joy in you anymore. They're just, you're just so bitter. You're just, <laughs> you're just going, okay, I guess my smiles are what, you know? And, and I mean, I'm enjoying life. We have a great time, you know? Uh, I have a lot of fun. You know, I laugh all throughout my sermons. I tell jokes. And, you know, see, you know, people don't even watch the videos. And they just, you know, they see me rebuking something. They go, you're so bitter. <laughs> yeah, kind of like when I tried to rebuke you and others tried to rebuke you. And your little cultic followers would answer that matter before they hear them, a violation of Proverbs 18, 13. And just not even watch the video or just that kind of stuff. And just assume people assume are lost because they speak against you. Yeah, speaking about people who don't watch the whole video, your followers are guilty of not watching and, and hearing the other side of the, hearing the other side of the fence and also, you know, listening to both sides. They're a respect of persons towards you, Brian. You know? Again, it's it just like, you know, it's ridiculous. They, they are just, they're wicked. <laughs> this is not actually a smile. I'm not laughing. This is bitterness and sorrow. And, uh, okay. Uh, that's one of the false lies that's brought against me. Another one of the ones that I love, and, and I just you know, let me just let me let me make official statements here, okay, against the liars out there. Um, Brian Denlinger is bitter and never has any fun. Uh, not true. I do have quite a bit of fun, okay. So now you can stop lying about me. Well, maybe you shouldn't because then I then say I won't get as many rewards in heaven. Okay, sorry. Well, you you certainly will lose some rewards, Brian, because first of all, it's falsely accusing people, which is the same. And also the fact of how Brian won't take any correction. So he won't be getting rewards, he'll actually be losing rewards for his blatant sin, his unrepentant sin that he's involved in, plus his unrepentant lies. You know? You see, Brian, Brian, he does not like it when you start pointing out his sin. You know? Brian loves to point out your errors. He points out, again, his cult points out everyone else's uh, heresies and sins. But, oh my, the moment you start pointing out their sin, oh man, you're just, you're lost. You're a wicked devil. You know? So it's okay for them to do it, but then once you do it back to them, it's it's wrong apparently. But the major double standard this cult has is ridiculous. Just keep lying, okay? Keep the lies coming. I need more, you know, against the ministry. That helps me to get more blessings. Um, again, another one of the lies is uh, the crime. Again, big difference between being called out for teaching for, for heresies and, and sin and unrepentant sin at that 
and also you know false doctrine, just all kinds of wicked stuff, and actually being lied about. You see, a lot of the so-called lies against Brian are from people who have left Brian's cult because we've seen what, what he's like, and we've seen what his, his uh, idolatrous little followers are like, how they idolize Brian and emulate Brian. I mean, literally, they, they emulate Brian to the point of where they start dressing like Brian and looking like Brian and you know talking like Brian. You know, it, it's it's just insane. It's insanity. It's again, it's a cult. It's a cult of personality. And then when he's speaking against Brian, oh, you're just lying about me. They never actually bother to watch the people their arguments too. They never bother to watch my videos. You know, they just assume I'm lost because I dare to, I, I commit the unpardonable sin of you know you know disagreeing with Brian. Apparently, you're not a liberty. To, you know, you're not you don't have liberty to disagree with Brian. It's a sin apparently. You know, it's it's ridiculous. He's no different. Than Jack Hiles, basically. He's no different. He's lording over the assembly. He's lording over the flock. Just like Jack Hiles did. Brian Denlinger is a modalist. He teaches modalism. Uh, this is amazing um, because uh, you just do a little Google search there and modalist comes up and it says God in three modes. Now here's an area I do agree with him on, okay? Um, the Trinity is a false doctrine. The Trinity is a heresy. I've done plenty of videos, you know, refuting this occult heresy known as the Trinity. Okay, so this is the area I agree with him on. And also, a modalism is also a heresy too. So just want to point that out. I do agree with him in this area. Um, show me where I've ever preached that. I never have. So I will officially state for the record, I am not a modalist. I believe modalism is a heresy. Okay, it's pretty easy to debunk. But it's at least it's closer to the truth than the Trinitarian nonsense. All right? It's a little bit closer God doesn't appear as three different modes, okay? He's body, body, soul, spirit. These three are one being, you know, you get it? So, you call me a modalist? Well, you're a liar. I'm not a modalist. Official statement, okay? Number two, Brian Denlinger teaches works salvation. Another one of my... Now, this is funny. I mean, the fact that Brian can just deny that he's back building works, okay? And, and before you say it, you know, no, I'm not an easy believer as a heretic, okay? There is repentance that is involved in salvation, okay? Repentance of sin is part of your salvation. Repentance of sin is godly sorrow for your sin, for sinning against a holy, righteous God, okay? But where Brian goes wrong is he says, you know, there is obviously a change. Like, I don't deny the change. Ephesians 2, 10 talks about that. Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to 14 talks about that. How there is, you know, you're created for good works. So there is a change that will come. Where Brian goes wrong is he says that this hat certain things you have to do or else it proves you're lost. You know, like his sermon, a Christian will not. Um, he said that there's these nine sins or whatever, I think it was nine sins, that a Christian will not do these things or else, you know, if they do that, it just proves they're lost. No, that is lordship salvation, essentially. It is Calvinism. Saying that a Christian will not, that is heresy. Okay, a Christian should not do the sins that he mentioned, but saying that a Christian will not, and also judging salvation based on sin as well. When you don't know, where they are in their walk, you don't know where they are in their sanctification, is essentially just nothing more than Lordship Salvation, and it's exactly why people say he teaches Lordship Salvation, and we're accusing them of teaching Lordship Salvation, because he judges salvation based on sin, and you have to believe a certain way, you have to live a certain way, or else you're basically, you're never been saved. That is the definition of backloading works, you know, you're slipping in works as kind of attaining to salvation. I showed, a, um, I have a screenshot, a comment, where someone was um, saying they listen, they listen to rock music and that you know they, they don't really feel the Holy Spirit in hymns. I I, I, I have a screenshot. I posted the link in the, in the article on the website called uh, Brian Dillinger and it's called Exposed. You can see it there. And Brian thought up calls the person lost for listening to rock music when you don't know where they are in their walk. You don't know how young they are in the faith. You know, he's essentially teaching worship salvation, whether he realizes it or not, whether he admits it or not. Okay. Judging salvation based on sin and saying a Christian will not do certain things is lordship salvation. Contrary to what he lies and says, I will not teach him lordship salvation. My favorite ones. Uh, I've never taught works salvation, nor will I ever teach works salvation for a Christian today. Now, I have taught it for, it's partially there in the time of Jacob's trouble, because you have, you know, uh, they have the faith in Jesus and keep the commandments, Revelation chapter. Again, this is another area where I do agree with Brian. Okay, there is dispensational salvation is a scriptural doctrine. Okay, I, I want to put that out there. Uh, salvation is not the same in every dispensation. That's a heresy. Okay, anyone who says that salvation is always the same, they're a heretic. Okay, 
uh, salvation is not always the same. Okay, in the time of Jacob's trouble, there is a faith work system. So I just want to point that out. Uh, uh, saying that salvation is by faith in every dis faith alone in every dispensation is heresy. Chapter 14, verse 12. Uh, you can't take the mark of the beast. So there is an element of works there. Uh, he that in shall endure the end, the same shall be saved. Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. There is an element of works there. It's not totally works. But then the, you get to the Matthew chapter 25, when Jesus is judging him and he says, you haven't visited me in prison, you haven't this, you haven't that. Okay, that's like pretty much totally works. And then you get into the millennial kingdom, of course. Jesus Christ is physically a present, so you can't have faith at that point in time. So it's totally works then. And you get that in Matthew chapter 5 through 7, the Sermon on the Mount. So it is somewhat true that I do teach works salvation, but not for today. Um, and of course people will twist that and whatever else, which is fine because you're speaking falsely against me and I get more rewards for that and the Lord blesses me more. Yeah, notice how he didn't really fully address the accusation. He just addressed that, well, I do teach work salvation in different dispensations. No, the accusation was not, you know, about different dispensations. See, he, he totally avoided and dodged the accusation. He dodged the question, okay? The accusation was that he's backloading works and that he's basically, you know, essentially teaching the worship salvation, but he couldn't answer that. He dodged the question. He's not honest with his viewers. So thank you. Okay? Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, but the thing of work salvation, they say that I'd say that a changed life has to follow salvation. Well, that's just kind of a duh moment, you know. But see, work salvation is you never know for sure. It's you are being saved. You uh, can't isn't that what Brian teaches? He openly says, watch this sermon called uh, Why I Get People to Doubt Their Salvation. Brian openly says he, he gets people to doubt their salvation. And he twists he rips 2 Corinthians 13, 5 totally out of context. But here he's saying, oh, you shouldn't be doubting your salvation. Work salvation is where you don't know if you're saved. He's contradicting himself. And, and this is not just one example. There's many, many times he's contradicting himself in different videos. So here he's saying, oh, work salvation. He basically saying it's wrong. You shouldn't be doubting your salvation. But then in a sermon called uh, Why Christians Should Doubt Their Salvation, he's saying it's good for you to examine yourself and doubt your salvation. I mean... The guy, it just contradicts himself all the time. Okay? Ridiculous. I can't say I'm saved. I know for sure I'm saved. Uh, that's not what I've ever preached. Salvation happens, boom, right there. Okay? Then you do works meet for repentance. The salvation, the, the second salvation is you save your life from the mess that it was when you came to the Lord to be saved. All right? That's why Paul writes to Timothy. Uh, I thought it was the Holy Ghost cleaning you up. So that was the Holy Ghost that comes in and cleans your life and gets sin out of your life. You know, you're doing it with the help of the Holy Ghost. Notice how he didn't mention the Holy Ghost. I find that kind of interesting. He says, in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. He's not telling them to, to work for your salvation. In other place he says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Okay? Yeah, in the context of uh, Philippians, let me pull up that verse. Yeah, this is actually a verse that a lot of the conditional security heretics uh, like to work out of context. Philippians, it's uh, Philippians two twelve. Uh, work out your, you know, Philippians two twelve. Wherefore, my, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Okay. In context, he is talking about having a good testimony with the lost world. Okay, being the light of the world. That's what he's saying in context. Okay. He's not talking about anything about work salvation. So that's I want to point that out because that's often the verse that. You know, conditional security heretics like the twist. Uh, you know, because verse 15 talks about that you may be blameless, harmless, sons of God without rebuke in the midst of dark, of a crooked and perverse nation, uh, among whom you shine as lights of the world. It's about having a good testimony with the lost world, being a peculiar people as zealous of good works. In Titus chapter 2, verse 11 and 14 talks about that. So, again, scripture in context is always important. But Brian, again, Brian likes to rip scriptures out of context. Uh, again, he rips 2 Corinthians 13.5. When the context of 2 Corinthians 13.5 is the Corinthians were doubting Paul's apostleship. You can see that in verse, I think it's verse number 3. Okay? Actually, let me just pull up the verses. I want to make sure I have the proper scripture reference. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 3. Yeah, uh, he says, uh, Since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you your word is not weak, but is mighty in you. Okay. What's going on in context? The context of 2 Corinthians 13, 5 is the Corinthians were doubting Paul's apostleship. And Paul has explained to them, they, see, again, they want a proof of his apostleship. Since he seek a proof of Christ 
uh, speaking in me. Okay? They want a proof. And Paul's explained to them, you go down and explain to them that they, in fact, are proof of this apostleship. So they should look to themselves on why they're in faith. It was Paul who led them in the faith, who led them to Christ. So they're in the faith, they should look to themselves, examine themselves, you know, why are we in the faith? Because Paul led us. So Christ is speaking through Paul. That's what's going on in context. It, it's not talking about doubting your salvation. So, but again, Brian, he, he just loves ripping the verse out of context. He also loves ripping Matthew chapter uh, 7, verses 15 to 20, when the verse has nothing to do with judging a believer's salvation. It's about judging the works of a false prophet. That's why it says beware of false prophets, not false converts or false brethren. Okay? So, just twisting scripture left and right. Sin will wreck your life. So you get saved, you come to the Lord as a sinner, broken sinner, you say, God, you call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. You know, hello. And you come to the Lord as a sinner, you get saved, all right? Now you say, all right, now, Lord, please help me with this addiction and that thing there and that thing there and whatever else and show me what else. Earlier he said it was you doing it. Oh, you're, oh, you're saving yourself, but now it's the Holy Ghost doing it. So which is it? You know, he's contradicting himself over and over again. Also, I need to clean up in my life. Okay, but that doesn't affect your eternity in terms of you know whether you're going to go to heaven or hell. Uh, believe you me, I'm in contact with plenty of Christians that are just really messed up in sin, and they're saved, and they're going to heaven when they die. Why? Because salvation happened in the past for them. But then other Christians who are in sin, you judge their salvation. You know, Christians who play video games, you judge their salvation. You say, oh, if you play video games, if you're not convicted, you know, then you're lost. So, I, I mean, he's saying one thing, but then contradicts himself, like in other videos. So, you know, Christians can get messed up in sin. Now, that's true, okay? There is the struggle with the flesh there. But then if you're in sin, you know, you have to examine yourself and that kind of stuff, and he's just contradicting himself over and over and over again. They put their faith in Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection there. And then they do works meet for repentance. And if they don't, they mess their life up. But they're still going to heaven. So let me make the official statement. I do not... Wait a second, I thought you said there will be a change after salvation. But then you said they, they don't do works meet for repentance. Meaning that they have the option not to do works meet for repentance. But then if there is a mandatory change life, which I do believe the life your life will change, you know, I do believe that, but he's saying there should be, there, he basically saying there's a mandatory change of life earlier, but then later he says if they don't do works meet for repentance, implying they could not have a change of life. So again, which is it? You know, and this happens all the time. You watch his videos and he just contradicts himself like, like a few minutes after he says something. He'll say something contrary. I mean, it's, it, it's insanity. And he's too prideful to see his own, his own errors. Teach works salvation for today. I teach it for the next dispensation as a partial faith in works. Because Again, he totally dodged the, the accusation. Okay. Uh, ridiculous. Revelation 14, 12 proves it. And into the millennial kingdom. In the time of Jacob's trouble, there's definitely the judgment of the nations. You see it there. There's no faith mentioned in Matthew chapter 25. I preached on that before. And then going into the millennial kingdom, you can't have faith in somebody that's physically ruling on the earth. Okay, so in that sense, yes, I do teach work salvation for the future. Okay, you get that for the future there. So, but you know, don't lie. But if you want to, well, keep the blessings coming. Okay, again, notice how the main accusation has nothing to do with dispensationalism. So he just totally went off topic. But going to end the video there. Um, just showed you he's contradicting himself. He's just lying. He can't deal with the fact that he's wrong in some areas. I mean, the guy has just got some major pride issues. So just. Don't, don't be the same. I mean, again, he speaks a lot of truth. I do believe he's a saved man, but there's some serious issues there. So don't be deceived with this cult. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.